Can God use clowns? In today's evangelism podcast, I talked to Shaggy the Clown. He has studied with Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus and performed with Cirque du Soleil. Now he is using his talent for juggling and doing illusions to bring people to Jesus through the power of humor. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast with Dr. Daniel King, where Daniel interviews full-time evangelists, pastors, missionaries, and normal everyday Christians to discover how they share their faith, their powerful testimonies, and amazing stories that will inspire you to reach people with the good news. And now, here's your host, missionary and evangelist, Daniel King. Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I'm Daniel King, and I'm excited about telling people about Jesus. Today, I have a very special guest. I've never had a guest <laughs> like this on the podcast before. Shaggy <laughs> the Clown. Thank yes. you for being here. Yeah, baby. We're excited. We're just like excited to to do what God wants us to do. You know, so we're here. What 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 we need to know, learn today? Now I love meeting you and love hearing about what you do because I got started in ministry doing clown ministry. Hey, oh, okay. My parents were missionaries in Mexico, and we were going out on the streets trying to get the kids to come to the church. And we found that a great way to attract the kids was to put on a clown suit put on horrible looking makeup and we would run through the streets and and the kids would come and yeah. then we would be dressed up at clowns at the church and and the kids expected us to do something so me yep. and my brother we started being funny and okay. entertaining the kids yes. and so the whole first 10 years of my ministry dressing up like a clown and so we learned to juggle ride unicycles ventriloquism and you've been doing that but at a very high level kind of talk to me about your experience okay. in in doing clowning well first you need to understand that the bible talks about clowns oh yeah oh yeah Where yeah does it say that? in first corinthians 1 27 it says for god has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise so yeah with the foolish <laughs> so no but uh we just started i started uh 30 years ago uh actually in puerto rico it was, i was trying to find a way to reach people in the streets uh and i was a missionary for Puerto Rico and the Caribbean, and uh, I, I saw all these evangelists in the streets doing evangelists the old way, which in some places it works, but in my country back then, uh, the people will not stop. We had these evangelists in the street where screaming to the people and saying, "You're gonna go to hell if you're not, you don't, you don't receive Christ." It, it was this kind of aggressive way to reach people that I don't remember Jesus being aggressive that way. And so I said, "How can I stand in the middle of the street and do something and have everybody come?" And so from there, I, said, I started exploring different ways, juggling, illusion. And then I saw somebody doing clowning. I remember somebody doing clowning. And I asked that person, I said, can you teach me how to do a little bit of clowning? And he said, yeah, yeah. So he just got all this stuff and put me in clowning. And then something happened inside of me. It's like, it was a click. I went out there. And when I started doing clowning, people went crazy. And people will stop from, from 30. So you make them laugh, then tell them they're going to hell. <laughs> what? No. Yeah. <laughs> but I will make a bridge yeah. to get to the heart. So I build a bridge to get to their heart with all this stuff. And then I will tell them and say, you know, uh, we have sinned. We separated from God. But I, it was an easy way to bring the gospel. And um, uh, that year, immediately I received a flyer and said, hey, here, there's a flyer. Because for me, it was important. I said, like, if I'm going to do this, I have to be professional. Because I'm trying to reach the people and I need to compete with what the evil is providing for for the people it, the social media everything out there uh the professional people are doing so good that they, they are attracting people so i said how can i be so professional and then i found this training where i learned how to do clowning with 
people, retired staff from Ringling Brothers. There were seven of them were in the Clown Hall of Fame. And I got there and the Lord just gave me favor uh, with them. They were not Christian. Only one of them was Christian. But they, they, I got favor in the way that they discipled me as a clown, as a professional clown. I learned the trade. They taught me how to be a, a very effective clown because I wanted to be a clown first and then being able to, uh, with that, I will do the ministry. Because some people said, I'm gonna do ministry as a clown. And then you become a preacher dressed as a clown. I wanna be a clown bringing the message, which is totally I was I was totally a preacher dressed as a clown because uh, I was always called to be an evangelist. Like yeah, I, that was yeah, my heart. Yeah. And so I was the straight man. Yeah. And then my brother, he was the, the, the funny clown. And so I would come out and try to preach to the kids. Yeah, yeah. And then he'd start goofing off behind me. Yes. And he would make all the kids laugh. And I would turn around. And then I'd go back to preach. And then he'd come back out. Yeah. And it turns into a pretty good routine. Yes. But in clowning, you need to understand is you need to learn movement, facial expression, everything of what is to become a character. Because through the clowning, you become a juggler of emotions because you express everything you want to express through sometimes emotion. I go to countries that nobody speaks my language and I can do 30 minute show and I have not spoken spoken the language, but I, I convey the message and without speaking. But that happened because I, I don't need to speak. I can do all this movement and show them, express it when I, I'm, I feel sad, when I feel painful, when I feel all this stuff. So I convey that message with my emotions and everything, and then the, they understand what I'm trying to bring until the moment they, they really get the gospel at the end. At the end, I, I start talking, I have a translator, and they receive the message. But I had to do it as a clown, not as a preacher, because if not, take off the makeup and become a preacher. You see, that's what I tell people. I said, don't be somebody dressed as a clown, be a clown bringing the message. So that's why I learned the trade. I learned how to do juggling, illusion, uh, uh, all this other stuff, how to perform on stage in order to bring the message. And so that's how I, everything started. I think that's actually very valuable experience for an evangelist because as a, a clown, you learn how to capture the attention of the, the crowd, keep their attention, make them laugh, make them cry, yeah. bring emotion. Yeah. And if you can keep a big crowd of hyperactive seven-year-old's attention, then you can do the same thing yeah. for any crowd yes. anywhere around the world. And so I actually yeah. think more evangelists should start out by doing children's ministry, whether it's clown ministry well, or not. And, and they should do children's ministry to learn how to communicate. Yeah, and and I didn't do it to do it for children. My ministry never never is labeled for children. I never label it for children. I label it for the whole family, children of all ages. So I never, I never started because I want to do children ministry or this group no i i actually i've been invited many churches on sunday morning to do clowning and sunday service and they bring out the children to their classes and i do the service for the adults you'll be surprised because at the end i take off my makeup and it becomes this very amazing experience spiritual experience because it's the adults need laughter a lot uh, children it's easy to bring laughter to them but as also at the same I, I've been in in uh, in places in basketball court with 5,000 children and when I get there everybody is screaming you hear so many people talking and all that stuff and I come out as a character I started and everybody shh and I, I don't have to say anything. And I just start doing things as a character on stage and people just, and children are like, and I start doing little things that start giggling, getting the giggling of them and the families and all that stuff. And it gets to the point that you have such a powerful uh, tool to control the crowd so they can listen and hear the gospel in, in a, maybe in a silent way, way, because I do it sometimes in a silent way, uh, or, 
or just speaking, but with comedy. So that's why they need to learn all this art. Uh, the experience of being trained with Ringling, that was Ringling Brothers was one. And then also I learned, I, I learned more when also when I worked for Cirque du Soleil. Uh, I had the opportunity to work for them. And I never signed contract with Ringling Brothers because <clears throat> they wanted me for two years contract. And I said, this is, I, it's no negotiable with me because I need to spend my time in ministry. If I go there, yeah, I will learn, but I, I want to spend my time in ministry. And Cirque du Soleil, it was just a small time where not even months that I worked for them. And it was good for me as an experience and to bring it translated into the Christian world. And so you've operated as a clown at a the highest professional level. And now you have a heart for passing that skill on to others. Yes, yes. And so talk to me about that. How are you training other people to <coughs> use the art of clowning and illusion to yes. reach people for Jesus? Uh, well, first thing I did to do that, I, I've been teaching and have some disciples in some countries, but it's not enough. I learned in ministry that what we do is not enough. It's not enough what we do. So one thing I did, I did a whole training DVD a session where I teach how to do clowning, how to do illusion, how to do balloons, how to do all this uh, outreach with uh, drama, how to operate a puppet, all that, in, how to juggle. I teach that in that DVD, which sometimes some countries I go, uh, I go and give it to some people that I see that, oh, these people, this, I can feel that, you know, this is creative enough, they can do that. So I give it to people sometimes. I, we sell it in some conventions sometimes because, well, every proceed, everything that I make is just for doing more mission work uh, in the field. And so, but, but yeah, I did that. And now I'm tr planning a mission, missionary clown camp in uh, in Guatemala next year, where people will come, we will train them, and at the end of the week, we send them out to orphanage, to churches, to do mission in the clown camp training, never done before. Most of the training that you get in the States uh, is like a one week, you pay for it, and that's it. No, I, I want them to get an experience and live an experience as, as they get trained. I think that's a wonderful idea, a missionary clown camp. There's a lot of people that uh, should go learn how to be a clown, and some missionaries are already clowns. They should, uh, they should stop being clowns. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and the idea of the camp is just to make professionals. Yeah. Because that's the idea. Is how you become a character. How you become this powerful character that you made the people fall in love with you and they will listen. Because that's what I do in the Muslim world. I go into the Muslim world, I've been in 53 countries. <clears throat> in some countries, I've been over 100 times. And with the Muslims, I, with the character, you'll be surprised. I go to the Muslim world and they don't bring me for the children. They bring me to do evangelism with the clowning for the adults. Wow. And, and I do this stuff and, and they fall in love with the character because that's what I try to do, is make them fall in love in love with the character, and then they will listen. You see? They go like, oh my gosh, I love this guy. I enjoy this guy. But then I go, and I bring the message. At the end, I, they go like, oh, what happened here? I have one guy from Baghdad in uh, in Iraq. This is a testimony It was amazing for me. Uh, before I go on stage to do clowning, they reserve this hall in, in Iraq, and they tell me, the pastor said, hey, I try to keep it simple. At the end, uh, don't make a big invitation or something because last week they killed a Christian here. And I go like, oh, okay, you tell me right before I'm gonna go on stage. So I did my thing. Over 31 Muslims came to Christ that day wow. after I did my thing. Backstage, I go backstage and this this guy uh, that looked like Saddam Hussein, he appeared over there and said, Shaggy, can I talk to you? And he would speak English. I said, like, yeah. But immediately my head is like, I'm looking. <laughs> I, I, it's survival. I'm from the street. I came out from the street. So my thing is survival. I'm going to look like I'm not going down here. I'm not going down. But then I go to him and say, how can I help you? And he go like, you know, I'm from Baghdad. I came to this. 
And today your message got into my heart. And I go like, wow. And he go like, can I give you a, ah, he said, I'm from Baghdad and I'm Muslim. And I was, and he said, can I give you a hug? And I, he hugged me and in my ear, he whispered, he said, you're welcome in my country. And this is a Muslim. So how powerful this clown where people evangelists and many other people always say like, oh, you know, how come a clown and this? Well, you know, with this clown, thousands of people have come to Christ. People who are Muslim world, uh, it's amazing what God can do uh, through through laughter. You know, we clowns bring laughter. This is a, this is my, my slogan. I always say clown bring laughter, but only God brings joy. So yeah, it's a, it's an amazing thing. I've seen that so many times, uh, and you know I will not stop. I've been doing it for 30 years. I, I encountered in a mission in an evangelist conference. Conference, I saw all these evangelists and these beautiful evangelists. They dress, you know, sharp. And they're sitting in the corner and say, Shaggy, but they laughing. And I see, you know, how they doing it. He said, Shaggy, can you come here? I'm backstage right before I'm gonna go up, dressed as a clown. And they said, they dress like flashy. They said to me, I said, do you think that Jesus would dress as, a, as you dress as a clown? And I said, I'm not sure, but I'm sure that he will not dress the way you dress. <laughs> and I go like, uh, uh, I said, so bye bye, I don't have no time for you. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, you, you can count so many people out there, so religious people that, you know, we need to understand that Jesus was creative. Uh, we just need, we are fisher of men. And I tell people, I said, as a fisher of men, you need to understand that you need to have a bait. So I'm here shark, uh, uh, fishing for shark and killer whales. And if you don't use the right bait, you will not fish. So sometimes we need to study where we're gonna go, how it is, and see what is the best strategy to get to those people. Tell me about how you communicate the gospel. What is one of your favorite stories or ways of sharing the gospel that you found to be really effective? Okay, uh, <clears throat> if you see my show, when I do a clown show, uh, I start all the way from the beginning making simple stuff. Uh, I do I do a, a bell routine where I play with people in on stage, Jesus love me. And I finish, and I don't say not much, but I say Jesus love. And we do the funny thing of saying Jesus love me, all that stuff with bells and people laugh and they see everything. And I finish and that's it. So I leave it there. So I go from the love of G Jesus that he died for, for us, but then I go all the way to do other acts. I include in my show different acts that have different message, all the way to bring it to the end. Uh, but the other message is about sin, how, how disobedient we are, and how disobedient, uh, you know, destroy our relationship with God and things like that. So I use different things, elements on the end. Then I do a mime uh, as a clown with the music that says, allow Jesus to come, make your heart his home. And then I finish saying to the people, I said, like, you know what? Uh, your heart is like, like a house, like home. And, and you know, when you have a home, when you have a house, sometimes you have guests and you bring guests inside, inside your home. Uh, but sometimes you don't invite the guests to the rooms uh, to see the rooms. Why? Because sometimes we have a mess in the other rooms. We only allow other people to be guests and, and stay in the living room, in the kitchen. But Jesus wants to come to your home, to your house, and has the key to have the key to be the one that goes and clean all your room or the rooms of your house. Even those little drawers that have all the mess that we have over there. He Even the one room in the back that you keep locked yes, with the key. Yes, that you you know that if back you open the dark, it, everything will come down out. So I, I explain all that through all the series of stuff that I do in the show. I can do a whole hour show with all this stuff. And, and during the show, people laugh. People cry and people think because the idea of a clown, I know it is that we clowns are jugglers of different emotions. We guide them to feel 
pain, to feel, to understand their, their condition. We help them to understand their condition all the way to the end where they said, wow, I need this Jesus. This friend of mine who is on stage, he's a friend of mine because the way he spoke to me as a friend made me understand that I am a sinner, but he showed me that as a friend, as Jesus did, as a friend, and he took me all the way to the process that I know now that I need this Jesus. Well, I so love how you are using your gifts and talents for the kingdom of God. Yeah. You found a unique way to share the gospel. We need many different expressions of the yes, gospel. Yes, yes, yes. And, and so if someone is interested in being a clown or getting in contact with you, maybe inviting you to come to their church, what's your website? You have an egg here. Yes, yes. You say, hey, look, this is some of the stuff I use to explain. I don't do magic because I know magic in the Bible is about doing witchcraft and all, you know, Santeria, all, uh, all these dark spirits. There's no dark spirit here, only the Holy Spirit. So what I show with this little egg is that the hands are quicker than the eyes, that I don't do magic. I toss it up in the air. They got to go like this, toss it up, but it's gone, but actually I left it here. This is what I did. I just did this. I kept it here, and then I went like this, and everybody go up looking like that, but actually I kept it here because the hands are quicker than the eyes. You know, I can be a deceiver. <laughs> go like this, it's gone, but actually it's guy right here because the hands are quicker than the eyes. So it's a deceiving art. And what I do is I tell people, that you know what? Uh, the devil is a deceiver, is, is the father of all the lies. So the first lie that he wanna lie to you is about who God is and then who you are. So we have to be, so this is how I use things like that. But if they wanna seek for, for my ministry, and um, they can go to chaggy.com, C-H-A-G-Y.com. Uh, that's one place, chaggy.com. All my social media is simple. I am Chaggy. Uh, I am, you know, C-H-A-G-Y, Chaggy. So those are the places you can find me. And, you know, you can look over there, the ministry, what we do. And uh, it's amazing. And I hope many of you just will become creative as you do ministry. Well, thank you for showing us a little trick there with an egg. I don't know how the people listening to the podcast will be impressed by it, but certainly the video people will. And uh, it was an excellent trick. Oh. Uh, very exciting. So thank you. And uh, thank you so much for being on the Evangelism Podcast. Nice to meet you and I hope uh, you, be you become successful in bringing people to Christ. Are you called by God to be an evangelist? Do you want to lead millions of people to Jesus? Do you desire to be trained in the practical side of building a ministry? Then check out the Daniel King School of Evangelism. Learn how to be an effective evangelist from Dr. Daniel King's 20 plus years of experience. Daniel King has done crusades all over the world in over 70 nations and has seen over 2 million people give their lives to Jesus. But it wasn't easy. There was no crusade school. So Daniel traveled the world, learning from and observing top evangelists noticing how they successfully won souls for Christ. Now, he wants to share decades of knowledge and experience with you. Topics of the Daniel King School of Evangelism include what is an evangelist, how to be a master soul winner, how to give an altar call, how to organize a crusade, how to raise money for your ministry, and much more. If you want to be an evangelist but don't know where to start, the Daniel King School of Evangelism is for you. Enroll today in the School of Evangelism by going to danielkingministries.com slash evangelism. Thanks so much for listening today. I am excited about telling people about Jesus, and I want to invite you to be a part of helping us to rescue people from hell and take them with us to heaven. There's two things you can do to help. First of all, can you go find the Evangelism Podcast on Apple iTunes and leave us a positive review? By giving a review, you will help other people find these valuable resources about sharing our faith. And second, would you become a financial partner with King Ministries? 
Every single dollar that people give us enables us to lead at least one person to Jesus. And so that means for only one dollar, you can help start a party in heaven. And so today I want to invite you to become a monthly partner. You can start out for just a dollar, but if God puts it on your heart to do more, of course you can do more. But please go to kingministries.com and become a monthly partner with us today to help us to lead more people to Jesus. Thank you so much, and God bless you. For more information about how to share your faith or to financially support our worldwide evangelistic outreaches, visit kingministries.com. Again, that's kingministries.com.